In this video, I want to profile a hedge fund billionaire whose life is the inspiration for the billions character, Bobby Axelrod. I'm going to share with you his trading strategy and how he uses information, sometimes obtained through rumors of insider trading, to pursue trading profits. Hey traders, this is Mike Sir here. I've been an active trader for over 21 years and a trader coach for the past 15 years. In my videos, I profile all the top traders in the world and teach you how to replicate their incredible success. I've been fortunate to train many successful traders and in this video, I'm gonna talk about this extremely successful hedge fund manager who has an excellent track record in picking winning stocks. His name is Steve Cohen. Steve is one of the most successful American traders of all time with a net worth of over $10 billion. He runs a hedge fund that has generated average annual returns of 29% or more for more than 20 years. Now this type of consistency year over year is incredible in the hedge fund world and has led him to charge management fees of 3% and up to 50% of a net profit gains. His trading success over the years has been controversial because of rumors of insider trading, which involves the trading of a public company stock or other securities such as stock options or the bonds based on material non-public information about the company. However, in 2013, his hedge fund SAC Capital Advisors pleaded guilty to insider trading and agreed to pay more than $1.8 billion in fines in one of the biggest criminal cases against a hedge fund. Steve Cohen was prohibited from managing outside money for two years as part of the settlement reached and the hedge fund agreed to plead guilty to wire fraud and four counts of securities fraud and to close to outside investors. His hedge fund ultimately closed in 2014, but soon after he reopened his own private hedge fund called Point72 Asset Management to manage his own capital. Then after his two-year ban was lifted, he reopened the fund to outside investors with tremendous success. It was back to business for Steve Cohen. Steve's trading style is a focus on short-term trading and looking for specific opportunities in stocks that allow him to obtain big positions with high profit potential. He's like the opposite of an investor like Warren Buffett who looks at a company's fundamentals before deciding to buy a stake in a company and hold it for the long run. Steve doesn't like to focus on selecting undervalued or overvalued companies to trade. You can think of Steve and his firm like a short-term speculator who looks for event-driven opportunities such as company earnings and other catalyst events. He relies a lot on research from his team and likes to have lots of information coming at him from many directions. This is his way of getting a good feel for how the markets are moving and where to place his bets. Sometimes he would trade up to 300 trades per day by constantly watching for changes in the charts and in the price movements. One of the reasons for his success is his talented team of over 100 portfolio managers, analysts, and traders they all trade in a 20,000 square foot trading room, usually chilled to 21 degrees to keep traders alert. And with Steve sitting right in the middle of the trading floor. Phones would blink rather than ring. Computer hard drives were removed to eliminate hum. Steve's main trading strategy revolves around gathering research and looking for key catalysts that could potentially move specific stocks. Now, it could be a pending company news earnings announcement where he and his team believe that a company will report good quarterly earnings and he would buy the stock prior to earnings and potentially hold over earnings. Or it could be a pending event-driven or special situation. Now, this type of event-driven trading strategy involves looking for opportunities that arise throughout a company's life, such as mergers, a company uh, merging together with another company, it could be an acquisition, a company acquiring another company. It could be liquidations, um, a company selling part of the company or selling other uh, parts of the business. It could be a new CEO or a new management team. 
It could be a potential bankruptcy, a company is going bankrupt. Uh, it could be a share buyback, uh, meaning the company uses its money to buy back their shares from the market. Uh, it could be a hostile takeover bid, another company trying to acquire a public company. It could be a change in index composition, meaning a company is being added to an index or the S&P 500 index. Uh, it could be a sale or a purchase of assets, or it could be uh, investments in assets such as Bitcoin. As we've been seeing some companies uh, buying Bitcoin as part of their cash reserve. Now, these so-called special events or situations can drive the company's price towards a new value, whether it's up or down. And the fund can take advantage of these stock price movements. The way you want to approach this type of trading strategy is to carry out thorough research on the operating and financial profiles of companies. This involves a good knowledge of the fundamentals of the company and knowledge of what's going on in the sectors that could lead you to these type of events. Now, obviously, it's hard to predict or anticipate these events, but there will be surely early signs that could lead you to speculate on what could happen. As well, his funds typically are well diversified across a group of sectors with more than 800 stock positions. It's been very tough to gather any public information on his trades due to his secretive nature and his unwillingness to grant any interviews, but I managed to find an interview where he disclosed some of his biggest winners. Now here's a chart of IBM. In April 1999, he took a short position in IBM prior to the company reporting earnings. He saw a potential catalyst in the stock and believed that the company would report disappointing earnings due to the fact that a lot of the computer uh, companies and software companies were also reporting lower than expected earnings uh, due to Y2K issues. So his team researched that IBM's customers were delaying the installation of new systems because of year of the year 2000, uh, just around the corner. Uh, they figured out that they might as well stick with their existing systems. So he went short the IBM stock around $84.50 and when the earnings came out they were actually very very good results and the stock price skyrocketed up. He cut his losses in after hours trading after the announcement at $93.50 which was a $9 per share loss or 11% loss. Now luckily he exited the position on the day of the announcement. As you can see, over the next few weeks, the stock price kept going up. Now, this is actually an example of showing you that uh, his discipline that he had by cutting his losers when a trade idea didn't work out according to the catalyst that he identified. Now, let me share with you an extremely profitable trade that he made. He didn't disclose the company stock that he was trading, but it was another event-driven trading catalyst that I mentioned. Now the company stock was being added to the S&P 500 index, which meant that index fund and other investment vehicles tracking the S&P 500 index were forced to buy the stock upon the announcement of its inclusion to the index. Now this creates a buying surge in the stock and results in the stock price moving up. And now, however, at that time, there were a number of other stocks in the sector that were under pressure and their stock prices were going lower. Also, there was an upcoming catalyst in the company set to report their earnings. Now, there was an upcoming catalyst with the company set to report company earnings. So Steve and his team were thinking that once the index fund buying was completed for this particular stock, the stock would sell off and the price would head lower. Now, they were very, very confident in their thesis had they shorted a million shares and the day after that they went short the company reported disappointing earnings and the stock price fell ten dollars per share this trade netted steve cohen and his team over 10 million dollars steve cohen has a few trading rules that he follows i'm down four percent year to date everyone else is up double digits I'm down. Steve is a big believer in trading psychology and was one of the first hedge funds to have an in-house psychiatrist to help his traders with the stress of trading the markets. 
I've been tracking rental car usage in business cities, developing relationships with managers there. Based on lots of activity in Milwaukee, I've deduced a big move is going down. Steve Cohen believes that instead of knowing a little about everything, you should know everything about something. This means when pursuing opportunities in the market, one should not try to trade too many ideas, but rather focus on the best ideas and try to dig everything that you can find about this idea. If all my projections hold, we're still down 5% overall. Anyone else would have lost 12 or done something stupid to get even. Booking the loss was the only way. When Steve looks for traders to hire, he likes to ask them to tell them some of the riskiest things they've ever done in their life. The reason is he's looking for people who are not afraid to take risks and have the confidence to take on trades and not just stand there and let a truck roll over them. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, there are three things you can do. First is smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit the subscribe button to watch more videos like this, and hit the notification button so you'll be notified of future videos where I profile the best traders. Second, if you're looking to learn how you can be the next top trader, please go to my website, mikesur.com, to download my free ebook, Become the Next Millionaire, where I profile a few of my millionaire students. Lastly, if you're looking for a mentor and want to learn directly from me, please go to mikesur.com to apply to work with me.